It's hard to wake up these days and not feel brokenhearted. The military conflicts all around the world, the bloodshed, the bloodthirstiness. Oh, why all the doom and gloom, BJ? Hand me my coffee. Get out of here. At times indeed, almost ridiculous. Almost at times, the fool. Time to turn back and descend the stair with a bald spot in the middle of my hair. Those last few words, they're from the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock by the master himself, T.S. Eliot. Eliot's poem, Prufrock, is a cure, I suppose, for addressing sometimes how you feel the questions that the questions that you think about. Poets and their poems, I notice that there are attributes of their personality that seep into the poems. He was sort of avant-garde compared to his contemporaries. He seems to be sort of new age, what we call cool, I suppose. And that's why the mass appeal in his epic poem, The Wasteland, we drown into the rubble the remains of World War I, the condition of the ground, the remains of the earth after the wars. But the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock, there is humor that you can amuse yourself with, I think. You can fly high or dive deep. There's lots of room, plenty of potential. And so it's Sunday, mid-October 2023. The air seems leaden with moisture. There's a feeling of heaviness in the atmosphere and also in my heart. For the longest time, I have read Prufrock, paying no attention to these few lines in Italian at the start of the poem. In fact, you could get by perfectly without connecting this to the poem. But ah, uh, of course, there is a connection. In fact, you could say that it has everything to do with the current geopolitics of our time. But first, let's just enjoy a reading of this poem. The meritorious scholars of the world, the literary critics, have offered an abundance of analysis. Prufrock is a man just like you, me, and McCavity. He wants to sing this love song wants to make a declaration of his deep feelings, but is unable to put into words to say just what he means for a variety of reasons, perhaps because it's not proper. It's beyond the bounds of propriety. They're probably each married, have their own lives, but in the few moments that they spend with each other, he can barely communicate in a way that she can understand. They come from different worlds. A good comparison, and not out of place, is that she's one of those folks who spends time in museums enjoying works of art done by humans, while he is immersed in nature. He's awestruck. He lives in wonder of the mechanics of nature, the beauty of life, the earth, the cosmic wonder of the universe. There's this very interesting lady, here she is, Neri Oxman, a truly amazing biologist, engineer. In a lecture, she talks about the communication between organisms, comparing their communication ability within the species. She talks of termites, plants, animals, bacteria, viruses. Of course, they exist in different time scales. So we can only talk within species, just for fun, in the spirit of playfulness. If we were to list out all the organisms living on the earth and rank within species communication, the effectiveness, I wonder what status we would occupy, the humans, on this pole. I think the love song can be enjoyed just on the merit of its words, its meaning taken literally, without a deep contemplative aspect. 
in this sort of exercise of bonding with the poet. Him and you and me becoming one, who in the end cannot find the strength, does not dare sing the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. And so a separate video to follow dedicated to the reading of this somewhat long, beautiful work of art. And then a part three to investigate that Italian connection.